What I'd like to do is just quickly share with you, a client wanted me to do some visuals on the website that I'm busy building and they wanted it with a transparent border, sort of a soft border. So this you could do with uh, creating a mask and then creating a gradient on the mask. But I know with Affinity, we have Affinity Designer, we have the transparency tool. Uh, and I know if you take any of these uh, vector objects and you use the transparency tool that, you know, like that, it will work. Uh, for those who don't know, it's you literally click on there and you have the object selected, left mouse button, hold it down and drag it out. And then of course you can adjust with this button how much of the transparency is working. Okay, so I'm going to go control Z. So I, I knew that worked for that situation, but then uh, what I did was I opened up an image, went open, brought an image in and okay this had a lock let me switch it off and des deselect it and then select it again came to transparency started drawing and then nothing happened and it was like okay what's going on here now um, if you click on the transparency tool and you look on top here's a context menu with type but that is blacked out if i click there's nothing happening there so somehow it's not doing it on a full document that you bring in um, and the reason for that is is that if you have a document with five stuff on it, five images placed on it, um, and you do this uh, transparency tool, it doesn't know which one you have in context. So to get it to work, you have to take an, a document and bring and place an object in. Now, but if I go in and I select one of the vector art things, I'm literally placing it. You see that it comes on a new layer. So I'm literally placing it on top and that's why with the transparency tool it will work there. Um, however, if I go to this background layer that I opened it in and I try that again, it still won't work there. Okay, so it's only on things that are placed on the document. So you don't open up a, a image and then use that tool. Um, so let me show you the way that I went about it. So I brought this, open this as a normal image course I can't now use the transparency tool but the benefit of me doing it this way first opening it like this um, is that I didn't have to create a document that's the exact size as the image and then place the image in I open it and then I delete the image and now I have a, a surface a document if I go to transform here there's nothing in here but this document is the exact size of that image that I brought in so I delete the image and I'll just go in again and say place and click there and place it now just wait for it to load if i hover over here you see it's snapping to the corners that's because i've got snap on if i snap to there and if i drag this will be perfect to the other end why is it perfect of course because i opened this image beforehand to create my my kind of uh, size template that i want to work with on my size document okay but now there's an interesting thing because i now placed it on here if I go across here to the transparency tool and I click it, look here, if I go there to type, now I have those accessible to me. Okay, so anything that you place in here, the transparency tool would be able to work with. Now I can go on here and uh, if I hover over here, you'll see it's get the midline here and this midline. And I want to find that midline to click and then start, start to drag because now I'm dropping in the transparency. So you see the transparency goes in a gradient from there. Okay, so you can do it in that way, uh, but I'm gonna go Control Z. But instead of going and hovering and first finding where it is, all you can do is go to the type and click. What it will do is place itself spot in the middle and create whichever gradient handles that are required. So for radial, it will just have one going out so if i click there can you see it automatically places there and then i just pretty much have to say where the gradient uh, of the transparency will kind of start and how much of it as such i'm going to go Control z to remove it or if i chose to go with elliptical to do the same put the two handles exactly there so that's a, a quicker way of finding this middle spot now just a point to note here that if you are working with a square object, I'm sure that the radial one would serve you very well. So if I go radial, 
if it was square uh, remember if I'm doing this here now it's choosing the longest side whereas the top to bottom is narrower so this whole gradient is applied in all directions which means that this edge here is going to be a hard edge if if I go now and what I would just want to do here I'm going to just place um, a color here and I'm going to make it black okay and then I'm going to move it it's on top I'm going to move it to the bottom or right to the back okay so what's going to happen here and the reason I got the black this is so I can just see where the transparency acts maybe I should choose a more drastic color like red so wherever the red is showing through that's where the transparent tapers off to so if I get back to this area to get onto it again for those of you who don't know you go onto the object and you click your transparency tool then this will pop up here if you look over here now this area here is red because it's showing through the red at the back so it almost fades out in this direction however here you can see the guy's head right all the top so in essence if it if it's a rectangular you always choose the shorter side so I'll go the shorter side and from the middle can you see it the red comes in there strongly so if it's going to go into a transparency it will start off at a reasonable space and then cut off there of course if you want to move it closer you can do that but but you see here towards the longer sides that where the red is showing through this transparency area over here is much bigger here it's just a nice sweet area so in this case when you're using a rectangular shape you would choose not to use the radial but a modification of the radial which is if you go here you'll choose elliptical okay and if I do that elliptical gives me another handle because it understands that I a ellipse is higher or, or wider than it is high so it's giving you another handle to progressively move out there so if I do this you see it's it's moving all in in one proportion but I want this here if I grab this side I'm going to move it out can you see what's happening I can even move it right past or I can bring it right back in it can come elliptical so I, I move it close to the edge here and then I can even take this and you can see here by the red still it's still going totally red so it will be transparent there and here it starts to blend right on the spot here um, if I chose to do it like that or a different way I could but this is what I find to work reasonably well so if I go in there you can see it's still red at the edge so it will still get to a point of going blending out into transparency okay so this is a good option to use the ellipse when you're working with a, a rectangular size object and you want to create it so I'm going to switch off the back rectangle and that's pretty much what you see as far as transparency goes okay and like the slider would make the amounts go I mean you could you could even go in here and change this to be totally black and almost use it as a as a vignette you know that would be okay but that's a bit of an aggressive vignette but there hopefully you get the point there that you can use the transparency tool to create this nice uh, transparency blend for your object and if you if for my purposes when I put it onto the website this background is is white so this is what it looked like when when I went on okay and here you could look at it and say okay maybe I should pull it a little bit back over here so I can have it blending into white um, and maybe I want the white to come right in so it gets a hard transparency over there and then if I switch that off that's how it will look so I export this as a PNG and yeah that will get underway see importance is just as I close if you don't have this spot on the mid center you could have it like this then what's going to happen that will be transparent but over here you'll get a hard edge a, a sort of a line going in it will look very unnatural then you've got to move it back make sure you're on the horizontal and that it locks to that total center point so I hope that you find that helpful and uh, share it with other people, help them also to learn so we can spread the good news. So have a fantastic day and God bless.